let him go. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Definitely appreciate the support. This will be Defending Gun Type Part 4. And obviously, as in most of my videos, the title really doesn't do it justice because I, I could have titled this a number of, of different titles because it covers a lot of different things that you can think about. And th this is just another way that I defend gun type. Okay, so it's good to have a diversity in regards to how you defend a particular formation. And I started defending it this way maybe last week, but I asked myself a question and um, it actually made me a lot better in understanding defense when I thought about defense in this matter. So here we get the dreaded gun type. And this was the play that he was coming out in almost every single time. Okay, so this is the question that got my... Uh, thought process going let me flip over right now okay when you design an offense if you think about an offense um, a play call let's just draw something up okay this is a play in which if you think about the coverages it's good against it's good against a variety of different coverages right because we're running the lion concept on the weak side and we're running like a sail or a flood type concept on the right side the right side would be something that I would utilize to attack single high and the left side is something I would utilize against double high okay so you know if we split the field down the center we have one concept going on on this side and one concept going on on this side okay so when you play defense it, it's very it's important for you to kind of understand what you're trying to do Okay, you don't just play a defense just to play it. You don't play cover four palms just because, okay, let me just play it to see what happens, right? You really want to get in the mode of playing a particular defense to stop a concept that your opponent is running, okay? So looking at the defense, and this is a mistake I was always doing up until last week, okay? Not necessarily a mistake, but an inefficient way of thinking about it. What concept is he running here, right? And then you come up with something from your toolbox to defend it. You know, if a guy's playing lion, like the lion concept, well, maybe you would run some type of single high to deal with that. The running stick, okay, let's utilize some cover two. Maybe we can make it look like single high and we're actually rocking into cover two, et cetera, to stop that, et cetera, right? But what concept is he running here? Well, you got to kind of split everything down. I used to look at it like, okay, what's the concept being run here? And then I would try to figure out what do I need to run? Well, if we're run, running a split safety type of defense, remember split safety defense, what we're doing. Our defense is, if you draw a line down the center, this side of the defense is completely independent of this side of the defense. That's what's one of the benefits of split safety structure. So what does that mean? That means we go to our toolbox here, okay? Obviously, you guys see here. Now, if you don't know what 422031 is, it's a sequence I put together a couple years ago. Every defense in the game, if you pick any defense, I don't care what it is, it falls on, under one of these six different shell coverages, okay? This is the split safety side over here, and this is the single high side over here, okay? Benefits of split safety is, again, we can play one defensive style on one side and a totally different split safety structure defense on the other side. What I mean by that is we can play a form of quarters on one half of the defense and play cover two on the other side, right? That's where you get like cover six, cover nine. But again, these are all variants underneath these trees. How about we play quarters on one side and we play a form of two match on the other side or quarters on one side and cover five on the other side, etc. Okay, so let's take this a step further. Now, one thing, the problem with single high is this side, I don't think you can necessarily play sky on one side and buzz on the other side right it's not really in interchangeable the way it is with double high okay all right so here's here's the kicker right here this is the the you know the big thing that changed a lot of what i do now and it, it helped me to play a lot better okay well if we're thinking in that r regard in split safety style we're playing one thing on one side and one thing on the other well 
shouldn't we think about that in regards to the offense? Okay, instead of looking at this and trying to figure out what concept is being run, you should turn that into a plural, right? Because draw a center line through here. Now, what concept is being run on this side of the field and what concept is being run on this side of the field? Basically, with split safety, we're playing two defenses, one on one side and one on the other side. So what concept is being run over here what in our toolbox would be good against what's being ran over here and then we run that split safety structure on this side and then what style of uh, what concept is being run on this side okay and then we go through our toolbox and we run the split safety defense that's good against this side when i started thinking more so in lines of two defenses trying to defend two concepts on both sides of the uh, center I, I just gotten a lot better in picking the optimal defense to deal with an opponent, right? So just looking at this, one way I thought about this, I'm like, you know what? Obviously over here, why not just play like a, a regular quarters defense, right? Where we box this, where we have a three rec, we have a quarter flat, right? And then you have the corner and then you have the safety. Safety would take the first deep inside. He should have good leverage on that. Quarter flat overtakes that, and a three rec would take this guy. And everyone should have proper leverage on these routes. We should be sitting waiting for these routes to come into us, and he would be the free player. I would like for him in this situation to play towards the middle once he notices that they are buzzing inside so he can squeeze the routes, but it is what it is, right? But what can we do on this side of the field, right? This is a condensed split, and they're going to break to the outside. And this is where I'm like, you know what? How about we play Pounder, right? I went over this defense, um, I believe, a couple of days ago. It's a cover five variant that Vic Fangio, I believe he created it. He's the architect to it. Where we play man-to-man -man on both of these receivers, but they play with outside leverage because you're trying to break to the outside anyways, so it would be in our best interest to play with out, outside leverage man-to-man. -man. And then the safety stays over the top playing inside leverage and he matches um, the route combination on this side, right? So if you think about it, this guy should be doubled and you shouldn't have a problem defending this route having proper leverage on the outside, right? So thinking about it this way, we're playing pounder on the strong side and we're playing a box on this side so if you don't know what pounder is it's where we play man to man across the board under uh, underneath but instead of deep half safeties they actually play quarters and there's a reason why we do th do this definitely go check out my video on this it's more so so you know a lot of teams they try to attack a split safety man defense by attacking the deep middle of the field but we kind of alleviate that with this structure where the safeties play a little bit more inside the numbers and then they actually match two to one on the outside here okay and then also you notice in cover five two man they play with inside leverage underneath but here we're playing to our help which are the safeties up above now, one of you guys, I mean, we spoke briefly on it where, I think it was Trey, where really not a big fan of having this guy play with outside leverage or this guy, I think it was the number two you were speaking of because you can get a quick throw inside here, okay? And I think this is more game dynamics. Maybe they play straight up sometimes. You can flip and, and play around with this, right? Uh, but, you know, you make a good point. I, I really wasn't a big fan of playing this guy outside leverage due to the divider rules. I would rather him utilize the sideline as his help, but I think this has its place, okay? And, you know, again, this is why it's very good to kind of understand a defense and what it's trying to do, because then I was able to transition and utilize this for what I'm going to show you with gun type, okay? So, you know, in that video with Pounder, um, we, we go to two man and I flip those guys to quarters, and I went over how this doesn't play the way it's supposed to play, because... When you do this in Madden, they don't match. They do not match when you put them in quarters. I think the game is coded in a way to where 
it realizes that you were originally in man-to-man -man coverage. So when you put them in quarters, they play just like spot drop zone quarters, right? So I went to cover one robber and I decided to, what if we play cover one robber and then turn these guys into quarters variants? And I like that a little bit better, but they still don't match. Now, why do I like this better is because when you play cover one, the man-to-man -man defense underneath is different. They're not going to play underneath trail, right? They play a little bit more straight up and um, you can get them to play towards their dividers a little bit better. And then we're also, we can press one defender and play off on another where you can't really do that in two man because if you play off, you know, he's going to play funky because he wants to play under post snap, right? Now you can do the over a top adjustment, but I don't like doing that while playing two man under, okay? So anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and skip this and get to the point, but this is cover one robber, and then I just convert those guys into quarters, but again, they do not match, okay? So that's why in that video I showcase how pounder is really, um, I put it in all red with the exception of one letter um because i had it color coded like where it was white that means it's in the game of madden where it was red that means it's not in the game of madden so how can we get it to play how pounder really plays well how about we come out in quarters with match on and then we just man to man all of these defenders and now we have the true pounder coverage, right? Man to man, man to man across the board. And there it is. So now they do match. He's gonna read two to one and he's gonna read two to one. Now, as you think about it, if we were playing outside leverage here and this guy goes deep, he would get bracketed in true uh, pounder fashion. If this guy were to stay underneath and this guy were to run a post, he would be doubled in true pounder fashion as well and there's a reason why fangio uses pounder i'm not going to get into that definitely go check out that video on that now this isn't practical at all right because who's going to sit there as the opponent and allow you to convert all of those defenders underneath in the man-to-man -man coverage right and that would get tiring as well right so as you can see they match and of course true madden even with outside leverage he gets burned to the outside i checked the ratings this guy was like a 76 I'm like, okay, maybe that's why I checked that receiver. He was like 78. So it was evenly matched, and he still gets beat to the outside, which is pretty infuriating, right? So what's the whole point? Well, remember, we're only playing, we're going to play pounder on this side, and we're going to play regular quarters on this side, okay? So we don't have to change too many people. We just got to take this player and this player and man them up. So let's go ahead and check out how it transpired. So I'm like, you know what? Let me let me let me do it. So what I do is I man him up and I do not move him. And there's a reason why I do this. I labbed it on, on the practice field and I was trying to get him to press this receiver and he he just never would do it. And it was it was pretty frustrating, right? And then one time I tried it where I just turned him into man and didn't do anything. And at the snap of the ball, when the guy ran a corner, he kind of collided with him at the top of the route and was able to stay on the outside hip. And I was like, okay, I think I found it, right? So just turn him into man and don't do, don't move him, don't do anything, right? So that's the defense. Man to man, man to man, outside leverage, outside leverage. And you're going to double the deepest route to the inside, okay? What we're doing on this side, you guys should know that this is a four on three deal. Three rack is going to take the first underneath to the inside. And I like to use the quarter flat in this defense so I can properly play outside leverage on the back to the flat. Let's see how it carries out. Snap, and you see how I overtake this route? Now let's take a look at this corner. As you can see, you got to think about the picture, the, the picture of the user. He's looking at this. Does that look like an inviting throw at all? No, right? Now, you'll see at the top of the route, sometimes he still breaks outside due to poor coding in man-to-man -man coverage, as you see right there. Now, you see how they collided right at the top, right? So that's what I'm, I'm speaking about. It looked like he panicked. My three wreck was underneath this route. And if you go back and watched, you'll see the only problem was the tight end breaking inside. The safety should have had proper leverage on that route. So maybe we can watch it again because he just kept running 
gun tight and he just wanted to stick with this play right so i'm like okay that's fine again pounder on one side quarters on the other side that time he went underneath on that route that's fine we give up something underneath so then i started to press that outside corner throughout the game and in, in this uh play i i actually didn't oh one more thing this is very important i mix it up a bit how about us as the quarter flat how about we reroute the tight end right now if you do that you might be late to the flat and get out leveraged so you got to mix it up you can press him by pressing x post snap or what I do sometimes is I just run into him, right? So that time I pressed him, and then I'm trying to get to the flat, and I do. And we have a monster rushing the quarterback, which is always nice. So gun tight off, set tight end again. I get into my ordeal, and this time I want you to watch the tight end. So I kind of get in his way, but look at the safety, right? I mean, this is just the game. You know, I refuse to believe that this is ratings evolved. I mean, he just gets cooked at the top of the route. And that tight end is open. So I was noticing this, right? Maybe we can go back and take a look what happened on that corner here. Oh, one more thing. I always put my best corner at the slot in big nickel over G when we do this. Because usually they want their best receiver running this route because it's broken in the game. So when we run pounder on this side, I want my best corner at that position. Yeah, so he, look at that, he's bracketed. So he must have hot route him to a deep go, maybe to see what would happen. And as you can see, outside leverage, inside leverage. He's totally bracketed. He cannot throw that, right? Keep that in mind. So we're going to get some interceptions. So I'm like, you know what, that, that tight end... It's becoming a problem, right? And theoretically, we should be fine. So you see what I did? I moved the safety further inside. I'm like, dude, you got to have inside leverage. You're supposed to play with inside leverage. So I moved him inside, got in his way and pressed him just a bit. He threw it, and we get the interception. Okay, got nice pressure again. But he was having a rough day, two interceptions. I just kept running it. I know he just kept coming to this play. You see how this time I didn't press him? I just stayed over the top and then came over. And look at that, interception. Go back. So I think one of you guys, you know got to hey what if they can get a quick throw to the inside right so that's why you didn't like the outside adjustment well i think that that's kind of alleviated in a tight formation like this right because if they, they were spread out more you know if this receiver was over here and in a corner and we're thinking more so here you know maybe you would have a little bit more space to rip it in there but you got to remember, quarters safeties, they should play flat foot at the snap of the ball because they're involved in the run fit. And they can be a lot more aggressive on uh, little quick throws like that, right? And I think this plays a part while playing against this formation. So he backs up just a bit, but it's not like he's flying out of there. And I guess he hot routed him to a go because maybe he noticed that this corner is staying outside. And that's what we want, right? We want you to stay outside to play to your help. And it just works out beautifully here, right? Drives right on the ball. And it's just perfect. Okay, again, so, I mean, we're cooking it up. Look, I'm starting to move that safety a lot more now. Reroute the, the tight end, and we get nice pressure, right? But I still, he's still open. It's still tight, right? Still tight. You can't be perfect. Now, and it's beautiful to see like how quick I missed out on that on that that uh, safety on the outside uh, the corner I left him in a in his quarters responsibility but you guys know 
<laughs> we kind of use the bug of the game in our favor. If you leave it in quarters, that corner drives on and out by the number one, which theoretically he should not when you play regular quarters, but he does. So we utilize that to our advantage. I play a form of cover two on the side, and I just don't do anything with them because he does that, right? So it's kind of funny how I, we use the bugs in our favor. It's just like kind of ridiculous that we have to do things like that. But think about it. If, if he's constantly going to drive on the one and play in between on a route combination like this, if we don't do anything to him, well, then why not don't, you know, keep this, this little play art out of your head and think more so, okay, he's playing more like a cloud corner, even though he's underneath this uh, play art, right? You think of it that way, then you can develop things with these two players to kind of complement what he does, right? So hopefully I make a video on that. But he goes right back to it. I mean, I guess, you know, hey, man, this works all the time. What, what's going on? Okay, so this is the, the ultimate interception that makes him quit the game. Okay. So I just, I was getting so sick and tired of this route. And granted, you know, it is what it is. We're bagging everything else, right? But I'm like, you know what? Let me switch it up and... You guys know when I play a single high defense, I like to do it from a double high shell because now it still looks like quarters. But we flipped it to now we're playing buzz and he's going to rock down. And you will see the results of that. Everything looks the same. Snap. The picture of the quarterback has, has changed, right? Um, and I guess he's just so used to that tight end breaking open at that point. But... No, we we out schemed him really hard there. He got boned there, and uh, yeah, I kind of understand. I guess you know I, he was just having a rough day. So one thing we got to do to get in this defense, obviously, you go to match. I go to big nickel, and I again I put my best corner here. And this video, this isn't the end of the video. I'm gonna show you a way. To, I mean, think about it. I'm always thinking. You should always think, how can you make the defense better? And I think I found a way to do that. Okay, so here on practice field, I put Ward at that spot at corner, put them both in man. And I, I went back here because I'm like, why isn't he colliding with the receiver at the top of the route? As you see there, you see that? You're outside. The game hasn't had true bracket coverage in the game since its inception, which is you know quite disturbing right you can tell that corner is playing man-to-man -man defense in a way to where he doesn't understand that you have help to the inside if you have help to the inside why would you allow yourself to get beat so badly to the outside right that just doesn't make any sense so i, I kept trying to lab it up and this was the change that i think changed everything a simple shift right you may wonder what the hell what would that do to the the route right well think about it let me back up just a bit Doesn't this receiver have a clear path up the field, right? And also, I don't like this front because of inside zone. You can get a double team on this guy, peel off, and work to the second level, right? So we killed two birds with one stone. That shift puts the defensive end right over the receiver. So we're going to utilize you stack, uh, condensing your formations against you, right? You put the receiver here, well, we're, we're going to put a defensive end right over the top of him. Now, true, it may disrupt his ability to get upfield, right? But we disrupt you as well. You're not going to get a clean path upfield. You'll see a slight variation of his release at the LOS. He'll take like an outside release to get around the defensive end. And I want you to take a look at how they play this when this happens, right? So I believe this is the mint front. Don't remember. Okay, so obviously I'll get into that. Watch the release. See how he takes that outside release just a bit. Now watch the bracket. Look at that. Right? That is perfect. I don't think you can play that any better. He's top shoulder, inside leverage. It looks like he's almost underneath outside shoulder right i mean that you would have to put the most perfect ball to land this in there i mean it would be criminal for you to throw this 
that that is just not there right so when i saw this i'm like please let this be not just like a, a rare time that it actually happened that way right so here's the replay he takes that outside release due to the defensive end as you can see and then we get a true bracket where you just cannot throw that so i did it again and lo and behold it it worked again that's just perfect So I'll leave it at that, guys. Um, you know, that, that's just another thing you can add to your arsenal. And again, you know, my videos, I could have titled it, you know, thinking more in terms of playing two defenses as opposed to one defense when you play a split safety defense. So from now on, when your opponent, I mean, we can look at this right now, right? We can look at this right now. Let me go back. Okay. So if your opponent was running this over and over and over again, what would you run to deal with this? Well, this is a single high beating all the way across the board, right? If you're in cover three or cover one, you're getting exploited with this play, okay? So, I mean, this is an easy one. Just play double high cover two, right? Maybe make it look like single high so they can run this play and not check out. And then at the snap of the ball, it's some type of inverted cover two and you could play this very well, right? Over here, I mean, they're they're running stick on this side so if we were playing a split safety how about we play just cover two on this side and then maybe on this side we play i mean cover two would be good here too right or even a quarters variant yeah quarters would be great here even pounder right i mean even a true pounder on this side where you play outside leverage and the safety maybe nails down on that and then you have the corner inside leverage on this route so you just take this route all the way right so maybe i shouldn't do this because i can go on forever thinking about stuff like this cover two all the way i mean slants on this side and then dragon on this side cover two is pretty good against that well cover two actually no i'm wrong lion is actually pretty good against cover two zone but two man would be pretty decent against this theoretically with inside leverage so um but i still run dealt line against um even two man in this game if i like the matchup on the outside so i, I think i would just leave it at that um I, hopefully I, I threw something on your mind that you guys can utilize in your games definitely think more so in, in terms of what are they running on this side and what are they running on this side if you are a double high split safety defensive guy and then i i guarantee you i'm there is no i guarantee you will play better in regards to picking the optimal defense to stop what he's doing. So I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you uh, keep coming back, man. Peace.